really have to adapt and overcome a lot of challenges in order to get these tanks up and running. The satisfaction to be able to fix a problem applies anywhere in life. Tanks is definitely one of those. I mean, the Army, this is their main weapon right here. So being on this team, knowing that I'm fixing the tip of the spear, definitely drives me. It's something to be proud of. Hello everyone, me again, Matmus. Thanks for joining me on today's video. Tanks. I think it's quite clear to say that if you've been on my channel for quite some time, you know I have a strong passion for tanks. Some of you may wonder, Matt, why do you like tanks so much? Well, as most of you are well aware, I was in the British Army and I was actually a tank mechanic during my career. And what was it that kind of drew me to the tank world? Well, let's start off from when I was quite young, where I visited the Imperial War Museum, a museum in central London, which is absolutely outstanding and has one of the most amazing collections of military hardware in the world. And that kind of drew me onto the world of wanting to be in the army or in the military in some kind or variant. It wasn't until I went to Bovington Tank Museum, where I saw the Challenger 2 and many other main battle tanks and other armoured fighting vehicle platforms, that my true passion for tracked fighting vehicles and tanks in particular really came to fruition. Now, when I was younger, of course, I wanted to join the army as soon as I possibly could, and I joined at the age of 16. And at the recruiting office, I was kind of debating on what I wanted to join. Did I want to be a tanker or a cavalryman um, or a tanky, as we're called in the British Army? Uh, or did I want to try something else? And the recruiter was kind of, you know, very open about what they needed and what they didn't need and the kind of options that were available to me. And, you know, being at the age of 16, unfortunately, I had to be given permission from my family to allow me to join uh, under the age of 18, which, thank God, my parents, uh, bless them, uh, allowed me to join, uh, which was fantastic. And I was given a couple of options. So my recruiter said, okay, so you love tanks. You've got a few different options here. You could be an engineer. You could work alongside, you know, being, uh, you know, a pioneer in the vehicles that are just digging trenches, blowing up walls, all that sort of stuff, in tracked vehicles. You could be a tanker, or a tanky, as we call them in the British Army, where you're actually in the main battle tank, up front, fighting personal with that beautiful main gun, um, or, you know, even potentially in the infantry. You could be in tracked fighting vehicles in the infantry, or you could be in the REMI, or the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Now, this video isn't pertaining specifically to the core of the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, but it does pertain to becoming a tank mechanic, because that was what really drew me into the tank world, repairing and maintaining these beautiful beasts. Now, I must admit, many people have told me, Matmus, if you loved tanks so much, why didn't you just become a tanky or a cavalryman? And, you know, that's a very valid question. A lot of people think that it's just because I wanted a career once I left the British Army and wanted to have, you know, a stable background afterwards. And honestly, that is completely the opposite end from the truth of exactly why I joined as a tank mechanic. The reason I joined as a tank mechanic was primarily because I was very, very uh, adept to being in a mechanical background. Let's start from the basics. I loved playing with things like Lego as a kid, Meccano, Connects, all these like stupid little kid toys that just forevermore I was hooked on. I loved them. I loved building things. I loved the ingenuity of being able to create my own things, fix them, you know, put them together, all that sort of stuff. And I really thought that I would be better suited to support these beautiful vehicles than I would be fighting inside them directly in a uh, armored role. And do I regret that? Absolutely not. Am I jealous of being able to operate in a main battle tank in a combat environment? Of course I was. But the great thing was I had the ability to work alongside them in combat environments anyway. Now, in Afghanistan, I was not attached uh, alongside main battle tank groups because the British Army did not take Challenger 2 into Afghanistan. We took the Warrior Infantry Fighting Vehicle, which was my primary vehicle of choice at the time and during most of my career. Uh, and I've never loved that vehicle ever more since. It's just absolutely an amazing piece of equipment. Now, right now, you're looking at the beautiful Abrams, the American equivalent. And uh, this video really is to try and give you a little bit of a broad overview as to why being a tank mechanic is such an amazing job role to think about. I don't want to deter anyone from being stepping away from, you know, the armored role, being in tanks, being in track vehicles in a combat environment. Absolutely no way at all. I want you to pick something that is going to pertain to you. And don't be persuaded and misguided from your, your passion and your core. I always said I wanted to be a tanky. 
Um, but I think there's a part of me that's lying to myself saying that. I think the true core to me is me, that kid, playing with that Kinex, playing with that Lego, building things and wanting to watch my dad repair my vehicle, our cars in the garage and things like that. That was what really shone out to me is what I was doing subconsciously. I didn't even think about it, that that was really my true passion. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of clips today that's really going to give you a bit more of a second opinion on why being a tank mechanic is such a fantastic trade to be a part of. And I really want you to consider um, some of the things that these people are saying and why they want to be mechanics, the things that are making them and drawing them to being in the world of, you know, maintenance and repair of these beautiful vehicles. So I'm going to start off with a U.S. Army um, mechanic who's clearly got a strong passion similar to mine for fixing these kind of vehicles. And I want you to just listen to some of the key things he's saying about, you know, um, he's proud to be at the tip of the spear and fixing the tip of the spear. Is he part of that spear? In my eyes, personally, yes. Is he fighting in them? Hard to say, you know, in the combat environment, sometimes repair vehicles are right beside the combat vehicles uh, like I was in Afghanistan with the Warriors. Uh, Warrior 510s and 512s, but this gentleman is really really passionate about his job and let's take a look exactly what he feels about being a tank mechanic. I'm fixing one of the army's most deadliest weapons, the Abrams. This is the tip of the spear for the army. My dad joined the military and he did 20 years and his grandfather was also in the military so it's a family tradition and I also want to serve my country so I think it's no better uh, job or honor. I did five years active duty in the Marines and then I got out did two and a half years in the reserves and I wanted a different challenge. I was actually going to go back active duty in the Marines but they only gave me two jobs. None of those jobs at all motivated me. The Army recruiter gave me a list of jobs. I chose tank mechanic because it sounded most challenging. I already have passion for working on vehicles, right? My first car I bought uh, was $2,000. I bought a dud. I had a choice. Either I could pay someone to fix it with the little bit of money I had, or I can learn how to fix it myself. That's, that's kind of what sparked it. Being able to fix my own, my own equipment, that's, that makes me feel good. really have to adapt and overcome a lot of challenges in order to get these tanks up and running. The satisfaction to be able to fix a problem applies anywhere in life. Tanks is definitely one of those. I mean, the Army, this is their main weapon right here. So being on this team, knowing that I'm fixing the tip of the spear, definitely drives me. It's something to be proud of. So, you know, I don't want to be cliche here and all, you know, tacky and cringy into being, being proud of being, being a tank mechanic and all this sort of stuff. The key basis to what I'm trying to get in today's video is it's really something to consider if you really feel that you have that kind of mindset for mechanical trading and you still want to be a part of something that's in a military environment. I, on a day-to-day -day basis, when, when I was fixing tanks, I got a sense of reward that I knew that this vehicle was fixed and repaired for the guys to use and they were going to use it, you know, in an environment that's hazardous. But my repair, my fixing of that vehicle allowed them to perform their job. The funny part about being a tank mechanic is you work your socks off for really no true reward from anything on the other side. When you're an infantryman and, you know, you're charging towards an enemy's target training, whatever it may be, and you blow it up and you shoot it, you're like, yeah, I just killed that thing, that's pretty cool. In the mechanical world, you don't really have that sort of thing. You don't have an end state where you're like, okay, I've killed the enemy, I've killed whatever else that I need to do, I've blown up this target, etc., etc. It's purely down to the basis of, I need to get this vehicle back up and running as quickly as humanly possible to allow these people to do their job properly. And I just loved seeing tanks rolling back into the field once I'd fixed it, knowing that, you know the time and effort, because it takes a lot of time and effort to fix these vehicles, the time and effort that it's taken for me to repair these vehicles to get them going has gone to a good cause, and it was just a real satisfaction feeling of having those vehicles rolling again. Looking at a Challenger 2 rolling back down the field is, uh, it's pretty impressive, you know? I always had the uh, hairs on the back of my neck rolling when I, you know, one of them roll in, it's having a hard day, and the crew commander's just absolutely threaders and so angry, he's like, I need this thing fixing now. I'm like, yeah, man, right on it. 
our crew would jump all over it. We'll get it fixed up as quickly as we can. Big old smile on his face because he's not going to be in trouble with the brigade commander or his company commander because he's late or he can't complete his mission. That, to me, was awesome. Um, and it was kind of an unspoken uh, respect between, you know, tank mechanic and operators of these vehicles. The great thing about, the, you know, the British Army, and it's different in different armies around the world, but in the British Army, when you're a mechanic, you're actually traded as a multitude of different vehicles mechanics. You're not just a tank mechanic. You actually start off as a mechanic of multiple different ve vehicles and platforms. You learn the basis of mechanics. Then you move on to tank mechanics, which is more, more advanced, because it's more heavy-duty. There's a lot more things that can go wrong. It can really hurt you if you do things wrong. For instance, things like track bashing, it's just, yeah, it can get really, really dangerous. Um, whereas some military is more specific to just mechanical repair on a platform or a vehicle. For instance, the crewman that we saw before who was actually, you know, talking about repairing just the Abrams, that's primarily his future job for the rest of his career. He won't operate on, say, Bradleys or, you know, Strikers or, or Humvees, and he will primarily be focused and working with Abrams um, unless he kind of retrades, I'm sure. And it's variant between different countries and around the world. The next video I'm going to show you is from the British Army itself, actually, and uh, a mechanic who's working in Afghanistan, working on what you guys would recognize as the BV-206, which is actually a, uh, I guess, plastic, rubberized, tracked, two-pronged, uh, box-cube type vehicle, which is really, really useful going off-road, uh, but they're a bit of a pain in the butt in terms of maintenance repair, because the desert and the sand just doesn't like these things too much. So let's take a look at the uh, clip and see what he has to say about being a mechanic in the Army. My name's Matthew Wellsby, um, craftsman. Sorry, I'm with Rod Gungaz Patrick. Job involves heavy maintenance. Um, anything that breaks, we fix it. Engine engine lifts, changes, gearbox changes, um, if it ever comes to it. Um, all the hydraulics, steering, braking, and ev basically everything to do with a vehicle. The main wear and tear is uh, the, the running gear um, tracks road wheels, top rollers, sprockets. Uh, it's mainly the, the bottom half of the vehicle that just gets the hammering on a daily basis. The task this afternoon, uh, one of the wagons had lost, lost a road wheel. Uh, happens on a regular basis. Um, basically just had to take the old bearing races off, the old bearing, clean, the, clean up the shaft and then replace the road wheel. Um, so it's all good to go. Job like that, it, out here it can take 20, up to 30 minutes um, cause it's slightly awkward working underneath you know restricted with space um, but when we're back in Bastion you can take the whole axe alarm off and you can get it done within 10 minutes uh, unusual jobs is uh, I've had to do is re uh, take out bullets uh, from the bar armor that we've obviously we've been hit um, can be quite a difficult task uh, some of them are really wedged in there um, but it needs to be done to check the condition of the armor and uh, make sure it don't need replacing um, if it does, then obviously we replace it. And um, if it looks all right, then do for another couple of hits. So a little bit different of a take this time. This time the soldiers actually deployed on operational tour in Afghanistan, working alongside these vehicles. Now, this is what always makes me chuckle when people say, "Oh, you're a tank mechanic. You're, you're going to be sat inside a nice air-conditioned hangar in a hangar back in camp, fixing off platform repair, just like these soldiers are right now." It's, it's it's baffling to me when people realize that what do you think happens when a vehicle breaks down on the field? Do you think we just leave it there, just sits there when it gets blown up, shot, attacked, etc.? Now, to an extent, we do try and pull it out of a dangerous area if we can with recovery vehicles and recovery mechanics, but there are times where these vehicles have to be repaired on the spot. I can recall firsthand having to do a track repair on a vehicle whilst under fire from RPG attack to get the thing able to actually tow because... You can't just leave vehicles out in the middle of nowhere and think, well, it's destroyed, we'll just leave it. It doesn't work like that. Vehicles have to be taken home one way or another or denied. And trust me, to get a vehicle denied, you're talking at brigade level discussions. And they just don't happen. So the requests are made. You get denied. Okay, you're towing this vehicle out. The only way we're going to be able to tow this is to do a certain overhaul or repair of the track maintenance to allow you to actually tow it out without destroying everything or destroying the vehicle towing it because it's under so much load. So, yes, 
mechanics, tank mechanics, do work quite a lot inside of conditioned areas where you're in hangars, etc. Because that's where we have the cranes, we have specialist tools, the things that allow us to repair these things quickly so that troops on the ground can actually utilize this equipment a lot faster and to the highest quality and standard. Battle damage repair, which I have done a video on in the past, and you can go check that out, is something that you try your best to frown upon doing when necessary. Repairs in the field can be very time consuming, very hard work, and also extremely dangerous. The simple thing of throwing a track, as you can see by these soldiers have done on their recovery vehicle, they had to actually replace the track back on the vehicle. Now, track maintenance really isn't a huge deal. People get very scared of it because you're working with a lot of metal, and trust me, a lot of things can go wrong if you're not careful. But it's not really that, you know, overpowering if you know what you're doing. But when it comes to actually dealing with, you know, uh, dangerous situations, combat situations, you notice in that situation there with the soldier actually pulling bullets out the side of armor. And that's why it always makes me laugh when people say that we sit back inside of hangars, etc, etc. Because trust me, firsthand, we don't. We are driving right beside, or behind, most of the time the vehicles that are in combat and helping them if necessary when they get engaged and attacked. Because that's our job too, it's to keep the battle group rolling as quickly as possible. And yes, there is risk in doing so. Now, I have always, always said that if you're going to be a mechanic, make sure that you're there for the long haul. You're not just doing it to get a trade out of it. Now, a lot of people will disagree with that and say, well, yeah, the army's a great place to get experience and front-hand experience on mechanical platforms. If you want to be a tank mechanic, there isn't very many tanks in the civilian world, so it's not really something you go into thinking, yeah, I'm going to be a tank mechanic, so I have tons of qualifications to come out and become a mechanic in the civilian world. First of all, your experiences are going to be very different to that of working on, say, a Ford Focus or a Toyota Camry, okay? Because they're just totally different platforms. Mechanical experience is very similar throughout the broad spectrum of mechanics and mechanical engineering, but when it comes to experience actually working on vehicles, tanks are very different beasts. Heavy duty mechanical work is a lot more different than the automotive industry. So if you're going to be a tank mechanic, do it for the right reasons. Don't join to piggyback off the army and say, oh, I'm going to use this qualification and and use this experience to be something else. If that's what you want to do, then so be it. But I truly don't feel that that's going to be the best profession for you to do, because why wouldn't you just go to school? Go to school, get more dedicated, specific experience for the automotive industry, because really, that's ideally the majority of mechanical work you're going to get. And if you want to be a heavy-duty vehicle mechanic, that may be more sort of the way you want to go, is going towards the heavy-duty world, because you'll get a lot more sort of hands-on experience with the army on going the heavy-duty world. So don't go into the army thinking, I'm going to be a tank mechanic, so that when I get out, I get to fix my Subaru Impreza. It, it just doesn't work like that, guys. It's a different world entirely, and I try my best to, you know, let people know about that kind of mentality when they're going to be a tank mechanic. Some other key things to think about if you want to become a tank mechanic is the fact that you are going to be working quadruple the amount of hours that most of the other combat arms are going to be working. The combat arms will hate me for saying that, but I'm sorry, it's a fact of life. When you're a tank mechanic, your primary focus is to repair the vehicles once they are down and out of service. Most of the time, when the tanks are down and out of service, is when people are sleeping. And to get to the locations where these tanks have been put down to rest, and the troops have been put down to rest, you're having to follow them there in your own vehicle, driving, commanding, or whatever else it may be. So when the troops that are using these combat vehicles go to sleep, guess what? You're going to be the one up all night repairing that equipment to get it back on the road. You will not be going to sleep because the first thing in the morning when everybody wakes up ready to do their next exercise, you will be following them onto the next location. You will be getting very little sleep, working at all hours, pretty much working in any conditions possible, whether it be hot, cold, wet, snow, anything you can imagine. And you'll be doing it in an environment where you're constantly covered in oil, soot, grease, Everything you could think of that's involved in an engine, you can get really badly burnt because these engines are hot. You're not going to normally just let a tank cool down for a couple of hours before you start working it. I can't even imagine what a crew commander would say to you if you went up to him and said, Sorry there, old chap, I can't touch your tank engine because it's a little too hot. We're going to let it cool down for a little while. He's probably going to punch you in the head. So yeah, you're going to have to repair things that are red hot. 
I can tell you firsthand in Afghanistan when we're repairing those warrior power packs in plus 42 degree heat that it's really interesting trying to pick up a wrench and take off bolts and nuts when you're actually trying to uh, deal with not only the weather but also the power pack itself. So there are things you have to consider about being a mechanic. It's not as simple as what you're seeing in some of this footage where, you know, they've got gantry tr cranes and everything's all nice and shiny. You are going to be worked to death. And rightly so, because at the end of the day, you are the one that are being relied upon to get this equipment fighting fit and ready to allow it to roll back onto the battlefield. So guys, if you do have questions, if you have comments, concerns about being a tank mechanic, you want to hear some first-hand more experience, you want to hear about, you know, my background, things that I've done, things that you're going to be involved in in being a mechanic of some kind, even if it's not a tank mechanic, you know, because I am a mechanic trade at heart um, in an all-round spectrum. Uh, I haven't just worked on tanks in my life. I've, in the British Army, I've worked on a lot of uh, all-round vehicles, whether it be wheeled or tracked. And uh, then leaving the British Army, I'm now working in a different world of uh, mechanical aviation, but I am working in a mechanical trade. So if you have, you know what, you want advice, you want tips, please come message me. A couple of ways you can do that. Message me in the comments section below. I'll try my best to comment and back to you. You can come to my Discord channel, which is basically a chat room server where you can come have a chat. More than welcome to discuss things firsthand with you there. If you did enjoy today's video, please, please feel free to go check out my Patreon page, which is in the description box below. And anyone who has been supporting me on Patreon, seriously though, thank you so much for your donations. Very, very kind of you. Uh, I am also on Facebook. I have my merchandise store if you want to go check that out. And I do have my fan mail box. So if you want to send me any mail to my PO box, you're more than welcome to. Anyway, folks, that is it for me today. Make sure you hit that little bell by the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.